Hello! Did you play Fallout Tactics back in the day? Did you play Fallout Tactics 1 and uh, Fallout 1, sorry, and Fallout 2 and think to yourself, whoa, those are brilliant games. And now there's a new game and it's called Fallout Tactics and I guess that's going to be brilliant too. And then you played it <clears throat> and it wasn't what you expected, but you played through the first three to five missions, through the first bunker or whatever, and you're enjoying the game. And then you started to reach the point of the game where super mutants and uh, beast lords with burst fire weapons started appearing. And the game just felt absolutely awful from that point on. And you canned it and you moved on with your life. And you were like, wow, that was an average game with a Fallout license. Well, you may have been a victim of the burst fire bug. And I'm sorry, but there's no compensation except for this long ass video about and it's no there's not gonna be any gameplay here I'm just gonna explain the bug because it's complicated enough without trying to play at the same time but it it comes down to effectively a mistake or a hack in part of the burst fire code which leads to a comically hilarious and totally um, totally uh, inexplicable situation where uh, shooting at somebody who you wouldn't possibly hit in a million years allows you to annihilate his best friend but we'll get to that <clears throat> so in fallout tactics there are three well let's say that there's two methods of hit calculation so there is the single hit calculation which has a variety of uh, a variety of factors in it, but basically the 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 single hit takes into account um, two things: one if you one if you should one if you can, and one if you should. So the factors of if you can are simply range and the amount of perception you have. So if the target is both within your the range of the weapon and within the uh, maximum permissible permissible uh, maximum permissible targets that your perception allows, <clears throat> then you can shoot. Now the things that chat that that calculate your two hit chance, so the things as to whether you should shoot or not. Um, Involve distance, which works against skill. Then skill itself, which increases it, which is the most important factor. And then, now whether you consider them to increase skill or not, <clears throat> it's up to you. But there are certain stats, perception being one of them, that add 5% per point to the various gun skills so they're reflected in your in your gun skill so just keeping in mind that if you have a higher perception or you have perks one in particular there's a perk um, perk called it's not sniper but it's the other one <clears throat> sharpshooter there's a perk called sharpshooter that increases your perception by two uh, for the purposes of hit calculation, which which is uh, worth ten percent on your two hit chance, etc. <clears throat> and when you're done with that, you will have a value between zero and ninety-five, which is a lie. <clears throat> You'll actually have a value between zero and I think up to nine hundred and ninety-nine. But only 0 to 95 matters. That is your chance to hit. Any number above that uh, will be rounded to 95, and any number below that will be rounded to 0. Actually, all Fallout Tactics rolls are done in rolls of 0 to 100. So understand that. Um, the 5% zone between 95% and 100% is uh, the do-nothing zone. The do-nothing zone. 
Call out the do nothing zone. <clears throat> if you uh, if you roll in the do nothing zone, nothing happens except that your shot gets wasted. If you've ever fired a rocket and it's mysteriously disappeared, or you've thrown a grenade on a ninety-five percent chance hit and it's just mysteriously disappeared into nothingness, you have rolled in the do nothing zone. <clears throat> but uh, generally speaking, your your chance to hit will will cap out at ninety-five. Um, and you shouldn't. What what happens is you have a ninety five percent chance to hit. Then a roll is made of zero to one hundred, and if it lands anywhere between zero and ninety five percent, you score a hit. If it lands in the five percent do nothing zone, then nothing happens. So if you're to hit chance is forty percent, then rolling between zero and forty would score you a hit, and between forty and ninety five would be uh, not a hit, and then the do nothing zone is also not a hit. It's just kind of weird because the do nothing zone is slightly different in that it does seem to cause explosives and such to disappear. Anyway, <clears throat> the single hit calculation in the game is actually pretty good and pretty robust and there's nothing wrong with it, really. I mean, it has its quirks, but there's nothing too wrong with it. The only real quirk with it is that... For example, if you set your hit chance to 999, if you set your gun skill to 999, um, then you'll always be able to hit everybody everywhere all the time. Makes sense. But if your perception is low, um, your range will be capped such that you actually won't be able to shoot at anybody. <laughs> um, Yeah, so it's 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 one of them. But for the for the purposes of the game, all of this works as as expected. Where um, as long as you can, if you can't, you'll get a red X on your shot. As long as you can shoot, then this algorithm works out your chance to hit, and it does everything that you would expect it to do, more or less. Apart from this weird quirk with the do nothing zone. Where you have a five percent chance of your shot just not, not, not just disappearing into the into the universe, being set free, which you would never notice with most weapons, but you will notice it with um, you will notice it with rockets and grenades because they disappear. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. Now shotguns, all the weapons in the game pretty much use the single hit calculation, including shotguns. But what shotguns do on a burst is they roll individual single hits against every target in the in the cone. So if I had um, if I was here, if this was me, this is my shooty man's uh, thing and I had a cone of fire like this so we'll put one line there and we'll put one line here okay and I have uh, three enemies in this cone why is it always new the, the new I say new version of paint it's very irritating it actually lets you change colors after the fact which can be annoying okay so if I had two targets in the cone with the shotgun burst <clears throat> Then what's going to happen is I'm going to make a single target strike against whoever I actually picked as my target. And then there's going to be another roll against uh, any other valid target in the zone. So there's one here. And these rolls are going to keep happening until I run out of pellets or shots. So shotguns are not affected by the first burst fire bug. What is a little bit irritating about shotguns is <clears throat> if you have an ally that intersects the zone... He is also considered a valid target. Valid targets are calculated from the guy that you aimed at. So if you aimed at this guy, then the first shot is going here, the second shot is going here, and the third shot is going here. So you can you can nail your own guys with shotguns pretty pretty easily, but they're not affected by the burst fire bug. <clears throat> so you don't have to worry about shotguns with the burst fire bug. They hit everybody. They probably could have used this for burst fire, but they didn't, and why will remain a mystery to time. 
Okay, let's go ahead and, uh, oops, using the wrong box here. Let's go ahead and delete all this. Okay, so the first shot in the burst fire bug uses the normal targeting algorithm. So let's set up our three, our three victims here. Let's, let's give them a different color. Okay, so this is Dave, who we're going to be aiming at. This is Bob, and this is Dave's reclusive friend. So we'll give him, we'll give him some, we'll give him some names just for the the pure fun of, pure fun of it. So here's Dave. Here's Bob. And here's our rec our reclusive friend. Actually, let's have a girl. So let's have Zoe uh, plus prone plus sandbags. Okay, there we go. Now, here's our uh, here's our strike zone. Now, if I have a 95% chance to hit Dave with my burst fire, then what is going to happen is, for, for some reason, burst fire is capped to 70%, and anything over that disappears into the ether in a situation where you would only hit one target. So, this 95% calculates both the chance to hit and the percentage of bullets. So 95% of the bullets are going to hit and 95% of the burst is going to hit. The problem is is that the burst is capped to 75% uh, to 70% for some reason. It's written in the code so there you go. So what that means is that this guy is going to get 70% of the shots and 95% uh, of them are going to hit. That is what's going to happen to him. And 5% are going to disappear into the do-nothing zone, which may not even be a bullet. So, what happens to Bob? Well, nothing. Nothing happens to Bob, because all of the shots have been wasted on the primary target. Now, if Dave dies, then things change. So if Dave dies, let's say we are using a 10 round. Let's, let's say we're using a 10 round burst. Let me just move that a little bit more tidy. Tidier, I should say. Okay, so let's say we're using a 10 round burst. Let's say that Dave dies after 10 rounds. Well, what that will do is that will that will trigger a recalculation. So if he dies after five, now what will happen is that this the this will be recalculated for the nearest target to Dave. The nearest target to Dave is Bob. Bob is even closer, so he's going to have a 95% chance to be hit. This is all using the primary calculation. There are only five shots left, which is basically what's left of the burst. <clears throat> he can receive 70% of the shots, but uh, there's only 50% of the shots left. So he is almost certainly going to take five hits as well. And that is going to be, that's going to be Bob Splad. Now, it is possible for Zoe to take a hit here. In this, in this situation, it is possible because Bob is now the primary target. Um, if, if the hit chance wasn't so high, then there would be a possibility of Zoe becoming a secondary target. But there's basically no chance of it happening in this situation. Um, 
because <clears throat> what happens is basically the chance to hit of these two are added together and summed. And then the sum of that is used to determine how many bullets should go to each character. The problem is, if Zoe's over here and she's only got, say, maybe a 15% chance to be hit, <coughs> the sum of that is going to be... And don't forget that these 95 is the cap. I mean, we could have a 200 or 300% chance to hit Bob. Um, but let's say, yeah, let's say we've got a 300% chance to hit Bob and a 100% chance to hit Zoe. That means that one quarter of the bullets should go for Zoe. In that situation then Zoe should take two hits, or one to two hits, should be assigned to Zoe, or one to two shots, I should say. Um, so doing the calculations on that, say about 15, approximately 15% shots should head towards Zoe, which would be one shot, most likely. <clears throat> all so far, this all makes sense and it all works well. Now, where the bug comes in is when you actually don't have a good chance to hit. <coughs> so, let's redo this, but this time, okay, this time, this distance is enormous. So, between here, And here, between these two points, let's say that there's like a river here or something. So there's an actual massive, there's a massive gap here. Okay, these two are not so relatively far away, so I'll just move them over. Okay, and now your chance to hit, let's say your chance to hit is 5%, something sad like this. Now that 5% chance <clears throat> determines the amount of bullets that are coming this way, so 5% of the shots, and the chance to hit, so 5% chance to hit. So basically, no shots are going to land here at all. No shots are going to hit Dave. Now what happens is the secondary hit chance calculation triggers. The secondary hit chance calculation only triggers if the primary target survives and shots miss the primary target so in the previous bit where i was where i was doing the calculations the primary target was hit or died and then the primary target switched to blob to to blob <laughs> he is a blob it switched to bob he became the primary target and the hits tracked after him in the same way that they tracked after Dave, after Dave died. <clears throat> you only get a secondary calculation if the target survives um, the amount of shots that's been assigned to him, or there's a spillover in shots. So, okay, so Dave is a terrible target, and only 5% of the shots went after him. Now, the sum of the chance to hit these two is used to calculate how many bullets they get. <clears throat> now let's say that Bob is not much better and he's only got a 10% chance to be hit. <coughs> Excuse me, still recovering from my cold. And let's say that Zoe has, um, you know, no percent chance to be hit at all. Well, what's going to happen here is the secondary hit chance calculation is going to assign bullets to these valid targets. And it's going to, in the math, give Zoe a 1, because it's the lowest it can give, and give Bob a 10, since it's the lowest, but since Bob's got a 10% chance to be hit. But it wants a calculation out of 100. <clears throat> So, it's going to sum these to get 100, which means that this these numbers are going to become, uh, let's see, if we times this by 9, we would get 90. 
And if we times this by by nine as well, we would then get nine, and that's ninety nine. So it's going to be pretty close to this. Ninety and nine is going to get us to the sum of one hundred, which means, obviously, uh, nine ish into ninety, about ten percent. So we've got a ten round burst. Bob is going to get nine shots. And we'll go ahead and delete this. And Zoe is going to get one shot. Now, here's the thing that's very interesting. <clears throat> this is part of the bug. But, well, it's not the worst part of the bug, but it's part of the bug. If Bob was the same place as Zoe... So let's say that there's two Zoes, and they both had 0% chance to be hit. <clears throat> then, of course, summing their chances to be hit would result in them having a 1 each. Which means that if Bob had no chance to be hit, he would get 5 shots. And Zoe had no chance to be hit, she would also get 5 shots. <coughs> because the sum of the bullet assignment would mean that we've got 10 shots to place, they would be distributed evenly between Zoe and Bob. If Bob had no chance to be hit and Zoe had no chance to be hit, they would both be on the receiving end of five shots. So, this can lead to a situation where a lot of, t uh, basically every target behind the impossible to hit target actually evenly gets all the shots distributed to them. Just a point I wanted to make here in case, you know, you've ever seen two people get obliterated behind a guy that you can't hit. That, that's why. Okay, but in this case, Bob actually has a slightly better chance to be hit. Now, the secondary calculation does not account for range. Or, well, it does, but it accounts for range from the primary target and is capped to 40. So, the secondary calculation is calculating this and this. Um, and in fact, if you had an ally, if we had an ally here like this, the ally would also be included. But the ally is almost never hit because the ally is actually miles away. So what's happened here is that the calculation is happening inverse. Distance is being calculated from the primary target, not from the attacker in the secondary calculation and this is the bug that leads to some very wacky um, outcomes in the game. Because of this, <clears throat> well, you know, if our, if our shooter here, uh, who we'll call John, <coughs> excuse me about the cough, if John was stood here, then of course he'd hit Bob and he'd hit Zoe probably with very good chances to hit. Let's say that the chances to hit are, well, for Bob, I mean, Bob is like, Bob is like right there. So let's say that Bob's chance to be hit is 95%. And Zoe is not far away. So let's say, you know, relative to Dave, but let's say because she's prone and she's got sandbags, she only has a 45% chance to be hit. Well, what's happening here is nine shots are going to be assigned to Bob at 95% chance to hit, which means that he's going to, he would potentially take them all. However, <clears throat> there is a cap on, uh, on the secondary to hit of 40%. Oops, change the color. So there's a, there's a cap. So, Bob is going to take 40% of 99 shots, which is four shots, roughly. <clears throat> so even though we couldn't hit Dave at all, Bob is going to take four rounds. And Zoe, who only had a 45% chance to hit her, but because of the cap, the 40% cap, 
there is a good chance, because don't forget that each shot is going to be rolled. So it's the, a, a roll is going to happen between 0 and 100 for each shot. And if that roll is below 40, then it's a hit. <clears throat> so that means that Zoe has a not, not insignificant chance of taking at least one hit. And Bob has a not, you know, insignificant chance. Well, it's a 40% chance of taking nine rounds. <clears throat> but will almost certainly take at least four rounds. So you can see here that because of the range calculation being done from here, <clears throat> it has meant that you have pretty much a guarantee of hitting Dave's friend Bob with many, many rounds every turn because he's miles away. Now, remember what I said before, which is that what happens if both of them are like Zoe? So what happens if Bob doesn't exist, right? So we take Bob away. We delete poor Bob. Okay, and we have instead Zoe... And Zoe's twin, Zoe Mark II, to Zoe Too Furious. <clears throat> okay, so we have uh, we have Zoe's twin, who is also zero. Well, now what's going to happen is, instead of this nine shots that we had before, being assigned to. Uh, Uh, because of the yeah, sorry. We have ten. We have ten shots to assign, and both of them have no chance to be hit. Then the sum calculation of where the shots are going. Uh, Zoe one is going to have a score of one. So Zoe one is going to have a score of one, and Zoe two is also going to have a score of one. And we have to get that to 100, so we have to sum to 100, <coughs> which means that the numbers will be will be multiplied by 50x, because 1 times 50 is 50, and then that gives me two 50s, which gives me 100, which means that both Zoes will get five shots, because they will both have half the sum. So now. You will have five shots for Zoe 1, even though you had no chance to hit her. And Zoe 2, her even more reclusive sister, will also be assigned five shots. And let's say that Zoe 2's chance to be hit is slightly worse. We'll get rid of 45% and we'll say... We'll say that Zoe 2 has a 20% uh, chance to be hit. Well, the point is that the distance calculation is still happening from Dave. So there's still a not insignificant chance that uh, Zoe 2, Zoe Mark 2, who's even further away, um, there's not an insignificant chance that she gets hit if the shooter was stood where Dave is. And nothing's changed about Zoe 1. So now, Zoe 1 is going to take 5 shots at 40% chance to hit. And Zoe 2 is going to take 5 shots at 20% chance to hit. Even though Dave had basically effectively no chance to hit. And this bug is caused by the fact that in the secondary hit calculation, it is, for whatever reason, calculating from the position of the uh, person being attacked, not the position of the firer. Which means <coughs> that you can bizarrely unload your gun at maximum distance against some guy that you have no chance of hitting 
and have a very realistic and good chance of obliterating his friends. Now, the minigun... I think the minigun fires either 25 or 50 shots. So in the situation of the minigun, which also has terrible range, you may have very little, if any, chance to hit your primary target. Noting that burst fire also decreases your range. But bizarrely, all that does is magnify the fact that anyone near your primary target <clears throat> is going to get obliterated um, by shots that realistically are all going to find the 40% cap. And therefore, you know, you'll be more than happy to unload your gun repeatedly and have 40% of the shots hit targets that you genuinely have no hope of hitting. Now, I believe the secondary calculation does respect uh, AC, the dodge calculation, the AC calculation in some way. So being prone and having sandbags does help a little bit with potentially avoiding some of the hits. <clears throat> but basically, the way to play Fallout Tactics optimally is to use one character. And if you're going to use any other characters, use them to carry things around or do specialist tasks. Or have them with sniper rifles and have them on the other side of the map. Or uh, laterally distanced. So, um, you know, have your, uh, have your characters, you know, like up here and down here. But if you, if you got to the mid-game and you, your uh, characters are getting obliterated, this is why. It's the... Enemy super mutants have got good enough skills to maybe have a 5% chance to hit you, or maybe even a 0% chance to hit you. This could be zero. <clears throat> but if your if your characters are within reasonable standing distance of each other, like within one screen of each other, well, just imagine in your mind that the super mutant is shooting at you with a 5% chance or a 0% chance. So none of the bullets are being assigned to John. And now the super mutant is teleporting to where John is and now blasting these two characters here and here at point blank range or near point blank range with all of his rounds, but capped to a 40% chance to hit. <coughs> it's, uh, it's not good. It's also, it's relatively difficult for a player to abuse this bug. Um, well, I mean, it isn't, but you can't shoot at the ground to make it happen because that uses the primary hit chance calculation. It only works if the bullets are aimed at, aimed at one guy and he lives, then you have the bullets reassigned to nearby valid targets. <clears throat> which leads to this clown this this uh this clown show basically and that's it that's the burst fire bug it's uh it's pretty ridiculous to be honest especially since distance is such an important calculation so the fact that your burst fire is being calculated as if the shooter is stood where the primary target is um can lead to some pretty obscene damage output against nearby enemies. And also leads to the very bizarre situation, which I've been trying to avoid in my campaign. Really trying to avoid burst firing at enemies with no chance to hit, knowing that enemies near them would be obliterated by it. But that at times is what the enemy does, is they burst fire at you from across the map. <clears throat> and if one of your troops is stood near enough to the primary target to be considered a valid shot, which is, uh, I think it's calculated by a cone, then uh, 
that that secondary target, that valid target, is going to be taking. It's going to have pretty much every shot assigned to it at a 40% chance to hit. <coughs> and with things like saws, firing 10 rounds a shot, or 10 rounds a, uh, yeah, t 10 rounds a, a burst, <clears throat> you are going to take, you know, on average, 4 out of 10 hits. And all of those roll to hit separately, and all of them roll on the cr critical table separately as part of the loop the code loop that does the calculations. <clears throat> so that means you've got 10 chances for a, for a 40 in one, uh, sorry, for a 40 out of 100 chance to be hit, and then whatever the critical band is as well, whatever their critical chance is, you also have all of those rolls to deal with on top. And that is how um, Dave, who's being shot at, never gets hit ever if if you know you can have a literal zero percent chance to hit and dave will never ever ever be struck <clears throat> but zoe suddenly finds herself taking not just a ton of hits but potentially criticals <clears throat> and being turned into a blood sausage in basically a single burst especially if the gun in question is a minigun because i think the minigun has got either 25 or 50 rounds of burst <clears throat> and 40% chance to hit on 50 rounds is pretty crazy. And it happens more often with the minigun because the minigun has shorter range, which means a lower chance to hit. Which means, <clears throat> because what you want, if you're going to abuse this, is you want as low a chance to hit as possible on the primary target, but then you want the secondary target to be as close to the primary target as possible. And that happens all the time. Especially for the player. <coughs> right, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this talk. It's uh, something different, but then those of you watching the Fallout campaign, I'm sure you're not really that uh, bothered by long sort of design talks, etc. It's a very silly system, but it's hard-coded into the game, so it's a total pain in the ass to fix. The only fix that I know of is a hex fix that basically turns off the way that burst fire uh, does does bursts. So basically, it turns off the secondary hit calculation. So burst fire can only hit the intended target and no other targets. <clears throat> so that's uh, kind of basically turning burst fire weapons into into repeat repeaters. You know, doing lots of single target shots against one target kind of undermines the point of the of burst fire weapons, but I guess it's a good fix because, uh, I mean, it's a good fix if you're being frustrated by this problem. <clears throat> anyway, that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.